Well, welcome back to the channel. So I've come down in what should be spring. Well, meteorologically spring anyway. It's around about the 5th or 6th, I think it is of March right now. And I've come down to get some more sowings done. This time of year, there is things that you can sow or plant in your growing space. For me, it's making sure that it's mainly cold hardy varieties. Well, ones that I'm trying to plant out or keep in the greenhouse at least. My heat loving, summer warmth loving plants, they're still in the house. Now, if you've seen previous videos where I've done the chilies, well, let's just say I'm extremely overwhelmed with my chilies at the moment. I've actually had to pot them on again into larger pots, which took me about three or four hours yesterday of messing around and trying to find some space. I've now ended up with, I think it's 98 chili plants. Now, my intention wasn't to grow 98 chili plants, but that's what's happened. I thought some of the seeds wouldn't germinate and we are trying multiple different varieties this year, but I'm sure I can sort that out. Now this has proven a little bit of an issue with the lighting in the house. Um, warmth now they're germinated, a standard home temperature is normally absolutely fine for them, but they cannot come down here to an unheated greenhouse. And there is no way that we can heat this greenhouse. There is no power supply down here and I don't want to use paraffin heaters. I have started a load of flowers last month and into this month and I've got Rebecca ready to come down here. I've got Cosmos that's just been seeded today. Once that's germinated, that will come down to a cool greenhouse. I've got Cactus Dahlias, but unfortunately they don't like the cold, so they're gonna have to stay at home for a little bit longer. And my Salvia also has to stay at home for that little bit longer. But I'm hoping the rest can eventually come down here over the next week or so. Most of them are half hardies or hardies and will tolerate some cold. So I'm hoping to get away this year with it. Now, next year, it won't be so much of an issue because I won't be growing so many chilies and so many other plants, but I want to be able to fill in a lot of areas this year with what I'm growing. But the seeds I'm gonna be sowing today and the bulbs I'm going to be sowing today are suitable for growing at this time of year and I'm not too afraid of a little bit of frost. So back in the greenhouse where it is slightly warmer, it's about 10 degrees compared to the about two or three degrees that's outside. Now, if you've watched the previous video, I actually sowed some seeds and some broad beans, spinach and some cabbages. Now that's my first lot of sowings. My peas have come up they're doing okay they can actually be planted out quite soon because again they are quite hardy and they won't be harmed by a little bit of frost if you let them grow too big though the shock of that might actually damage your stems and you might have issues with rotting off or your peas dying back so if you can get them in quite small and stubby it makes it a lot easier now my broad beans i made a bit of mistake i've not been able to find my deeper cells for my broad beans. I like to have a slightly deeper cell. Um, the only ones I had that was deeper was just far too narrow at the top to actually put my beans. So I've actually exchanged them into some slightly deeper, wider necks. Now next year, I'm gonna buy some good cells for just broad beans, because each year with the rubbish ones that I've got, because we really do just kind of search about and find what we can actually get for free. But I think for next year, I wanna get some dedicated cells for my broad beans, but these have all started to come up. Now, I did replant them after they started to sprout the new growth, but I really don't think it's actually harmed them any. Now, I've got multiple sets of these broad beans. The other, th everything in this greenhouse that I planted the other week has actually germinated, apart from spring onions. But these are my greyhound cabbages, which I really do need pricking out. And to be honest, they could do with a good water. So I'm gonna put those to the side so I don't forget. My spinaches are looking quite healthy. And again, these have been a bit dry. I've actually forgot to water these a couple of days ago. And my early cabbage, or earliest of all cabbages, as they're called, 
have all sprouted and I need to prick these out. Now, I prick these out at really quite a small stage. I find that it's less root damage, there's less entanglement, and I never wait for true leaves. Now, whether this is right or wrong, this has worked fine for me for a long, long time of actually transplanting my seedlings. So that's what one of my jobs is. And obviously my sweet peas. Now, these have been in this greenhouse since germinating at home, and all I've done is pinch the tops off. Now, I've got quite a few here, but I'm going to be sowing some more. So I've got more of a succession of sweet peas because I really do love the flowers and the fragrance that they give off. At this time of year, you really should be bringing in your seeds to germinate actually at home. It doesn't necessarily have to be a high temperature, but really it is probably best. But I think I timed these quite well last week, I think all the week before, I can't remember. But I knew we were going to have mild weather for about a week. That mild weather has allowed this germination to take place outdoors, which considering how much room I have left in my home, for germinating seedlings. I am extremely happy with that. Now this week's gonna be mild again. You wouldn't think so from outside. So I'm actually gonna sow down here and leave them down here to germinate and see what happens because I just don't have the space. I'm gonna show you which seeds I'm going to be sowing. Now I'm not gonna go crazy with this week with sowings, but there are some things that I want to start off. One of them is Kalrobi which is this one I'm going to try this year. I've not grown this variety before, but I really want to give this one a go. Now, I'm growing it now so it actually starts getting big enough before the height of summer, in case it starts to bolt, which can happen with this kind of thing. So, I'm going to be trying that. One of the other things that I want to start growing is even though I've got some earliest of all cabbages and some greyhounds, I want to grow some spring greens. Now, because these don't actually heart up the same as let's, let's say the greyhounds and some of the others that I grow, I haven't got the fear of eating the odd slug or two. That's the problem I found last year with the whole of the UK suffering massively from excess slugs. Our cabbages, as we were cutting through, they were all the way through to the hearts. So I'm gonna grow a looser hearting cabbage this year so it's much easier to get rid of all those slugs. And that's something I'm gonna be starting. You've got the good old coriander. Great staple, and I'll be starting this down here too. Now I'll be successionally planting and sowing these all the way through most of the year, but I wanna get a good crop started as soon as possible. I've got plenty of space, and I'm gonna put this in between some of the other veggies. Another one some lettuces. Now I'm going to be doing this romaine lettuce, this particular one, I think it's yet yeah, romaine balloon. I want to grow some of those this year. They grew quite well last year, but the bed I had it in was a little bit too wet. So I'm going to change beds and put this somewhere else. The other lettuce I'm going to be sowing is my little gems. I love a little gem, especially just char grilled lightly when it's sliced in half. Again, this is something I'm going to be sowing. Now, there's other little bits and pieces that I will be doing, and I will be successional sowing my spinach, some more broad beans, definitely some more peas. I don't think I'm gonna do any more of the cabbages that I've already sown, but there'll be other little bits and pieces. Now, what I did pick up quite cheaply the other day was some allium bulbs. Now, I have these in the garden, and I did collect a load of seed, but I just didn't get round to actually sowing them last year. Now these were quite cheap, but these are supposed to have been planted latest by November, December. So I'm gonna get these in and see if I can actually get these to flower this year. So I've got the large ball mix and I've got a drumstick mix. And I'm gonna see if these actually succeed for this year. My other bulbs I'm gonna be planting, that is just for flowers, is my gladioli bulbs. These I'm gonna start getting into the ground. Now, another one that I got, which may be a bargain, maybe not a bargain, was the 100 Flower Bulb Vibrant Collection from Tesco's. Now, it was only £10, but it has got a mixture of different things. So I'm gonna give these ones a go. Now, obviously I've got a lot of dahlias at home, but I love a dahlia, and I think they look absolutely spectacular. Now, 
some of these can be grown from now others like to wait till a bit later on in the year so i'm gonna have to have a look through these individually because it doesn't give you the details on this of when to sow the individual bulbs just as a collective and i'll be sowing some of these to give my to give my bees and my pollinators plenty of choice on this plot for this year now some of the ones that i will be starting but just not today will be some broccoli too it's good to be able to get that broccoli in because again if we have a really really hot summer that can cause it to have issues and bolt before it's time and don't forget you may have just about enough time now to sow some peppers if that's what you want to grow some chilies and aubergines too but remember not in the greenhouse they have to stay indoors unless you've got a frost free greenhouse and if you have lucky you so a lot of these things you can succession or sow throughout the next month to give you a crop that lasts through a much longer growing period now i like to leave it about a week to two weeks pretty much between my successional sowings otherwise you find that they actually can just end up all being at the same side but have a look at your seed packets see what varieties you are growing to get the best idea of how long they take to germinate and how long they take to actually mature into the vegetable or fruit of your choice this will then help you try and work out your successional plantings so that's what I'm doing today. What are you doing at the moment? Have you got anything sown right now for the first week of March? I'm actually getting excited. Even though the weather is a bit pants today, it actually has been quite nice and sunny at times over the last day or two. And having that bright yellow object in the sky shining at this time of year is just great. I love it. Things are really starting to waken up here on our allotment. So let me know in the comments guys, what are you sowing? Are you trying anything different this year? I've got a few things that I've never really grown before and I'll show you in a future video about that. But let me know in those comments. I love to see those comments and it really does inspire me for my own plot. 